So it's now been almost two years since James Webb started doing science. And during these two years, he was able to prove to us how incredible it is at being able to see things we could never see before. For example, exoplanetary atmospheres. Discovering if certain planets have any atmosphere at all and basically clarifying certain things about certain planets. And in one of the previous videos that should be in the description, it already revealed certain things about the famous TRAPPIST-1 system, probably the most exciting exoplanetary system we know, but pretty much every month now we get a new study about some kind of a planet where someone discovered something. For example, methane has now been discovered around several planets, including WASP-80b. And this is of course something that we do expect around various ice giants, which of course makes this a somewhat intriguing confirmation. It means that ice giants are generally kind of similar in a lot of star systems. Here we're talking about planets like Neptune and Uranus. Likewise, by analyzing the atmosphere of WASP-17b, a hot Jupiter really far away from us, 1300 light years, it was able to discover unusual crystal clouds made out of quartz. Not something we actually see pretty much anywhere, but that's essentially how good the telescope is at finding these minute elements. Then it was able to discover silicate clouds, water vapor, sulfur dioxide and no methane around WASP-107b. Another really hot planet, but once again with very exotic atmosphere we've never seen before. And in this case the actual observations are very detailed and provide us with a lot of evidence but also help us understand how a lot of these exoplanets are just so different from anything in the solar system. There was even a confirmation of unusual clouds around WASP-107b that seems to contain water vapor and sulfur dioxide clouds that form on the night side of this somewhat hot planet. But so far pretty much all of these planets were basically different forms of gas giants, planets with very extensive atmospheres but not really planets that are super exciting for, for example, finding life. But now we have a very recent study that basically once again kind of went viral because of the star system that's explored and of course the discoveries. This is a star system known as 55 Cancrii, an intriguing binary system where we know at least five planets seem to exist and a system that's approximately 41 light years away from the sun. The system is actually really famous and it even has a proper name. The main star here is known as Copernicus. But the star also has a partner, a smaller red dwarf. But today we know that it has at least five planets named after various astronomers. And though most of them seem to be really massive, very likely once again gas giants, the closest planet, planet Cancrii E, also known as planet Jensen, is a little bit different. Even though it's approximately eight masses of planet Earth, it's extremely likely to be terrestrial in nature. But also, as you can see from these simulations by NASA, potentially some kind of a really hot lava world. Now that by itself is debatable, but we know that because of its proximity to the star, which is actually just a little bit less massive than the sun, this is a K-type star, the temperatures here are definitely very hot. The day temperature is over 1700 Celsius, 3100 Fahrenheit, or basically hot enough to melt iron with the night temperature possibly being a little bit cooler at maybe 1100 Celsius, 2000 Fahrenheit. And because this planet is tidally locked, it does have very different temperatures, as recently confirmed by James Webb. And this planet has been known for at least 20 years. It's actually one of the first terrestrial exoplanets ever discovered. As a matter of fact, when it was discovered, it was so exciting that some scientists even decided to send a kind of an extraterrestrial message to this star system. It was part of the project known as Cosmic Call, that was actually conducted in Ukraine. This is part of the principle known as METI that you can learn more about in one of the videos in the description. And so in theory, this planet is going to be receiving these signals in 2044. But that's obviously beside the point. The point is that this planet was super exciting because it was terrestrial and it was orbiting a sun-like star. But still very different from anything in the solar system, way more massive than Earth and much much closer to the star. Fun fact, the star system here is so bright that you can technically see it with a naked eye. And so if you do actually have some kind of a telescope, in theory you could even observe the motion of this planet around the star. You will see it as tiny dips approximately every 17 hours. And this is also a relatively old star system, possibly up to 10 billion years old. So these are not new planets and are thus particularly interesting when studying atmospheres. 
Mostly because scientists want to find out how these atmospheres can survive or change over time, especially as star systems evolve. And while well, initially, in 2016, the observations by the Hubble Space Telescope revealed potential detection of hydrogen and helium, but definitely no water vapor at all. With additional observations even suggesting that this could be what's known as a carbon planet. Or basically a planet enriched in carbon instead of oxygen like Earth. Here it was even suggested that because this planet was possibly mostly carbon, it might even have some kind of a diamond core on the inside. Or at least have mantle in strange and unusual diamond-like formations. But all of these discoveries and analysis was more or less preliminary. Until of course, now. Because the James Webb finally revealed something else. Providing us with the best evidence we have so far for an existence of very interesting atmosphere around a rocky planet. Obviously outside of the solar system. And specifically atmosphere containing volatiles. Not really hydrogen or helium as expected from gas giants. And not things like iron or silicate expected from super super hot planets where things are just more extreme. Instead here it was something else. And the way it was discovered is of course really cool. Here once again the researchers were basically looking at how this planet seems to change as it orbits the star. Specifically they were observing changes in brightness as it moved around the star and then as it moved in front of the star or behind the star. And by then subtracting the brightness during these secondary eclipses, they were able to calculate very specific wavelengths of infrared light coming from the day side and the night side of the planet, which is actually seen in this graph. And then they compare this to various models. For example, models involving some kind of a rocky atmosphere, such as silicate atmosphere, or a model involving a planet rich in volatiles, maybe carbon dioxide or carbon monoxide. And so here, one of the main discoveries was basically a large difference between the day side and the night side temperatures, which actually suggests only one thing, an extremely effective way for this planet to somehow distribute energy from the day to night sides. And if this was some kind of a lava planet, like you see in the simulation here, and essentially contained nothing else, or for example maybe no atmosphere, it would just not have enough ability to transfer all of this heat from one side to the other. So this is kind of out. Instead it seems to definitely contain some kind of a volatile, for example carbon dioxide. Something to absorb some of the heat and to then transfer it somewhere else. And here the researchers actually see an unusual dip at 4 to 5 microns. This is something that's usually seen only with volatile atmospheres. Now nobody's actually sure what exactly this is, but this is definitely an atmosphere potentially similar to what we detect on Venus or Earth. Although probably more Venus than Earth. But this also obviously raises the next question. How exactly does this work? Where is it coming from? And why is it still there? Once again, these are ancient planets, possibly up to 10 billion years old. Which means that over time, as you see in this simulation, this planet should have already lost all of its atmosphere long time ago. Especially if the atmosphere is volatile. Yet somehow it hasn't, which now suggests that this is possibly a secondary atmosphere. Or basically something inside the planet is constantly replenishing the atmosphere, releasing it very likely from within the mantle. And here they think it's maybe, possibly, related to magma. And so one explanation is once again some kind of a magma or lava ocean that releases a lot of carbon dioxide and possibly some other gases, but in such huge amounts that it forms a relatively thick atmosphere around the planet, which is then constantly replenished at all times. With the mechanism basically involving the mantle of the planet, slowly releasing all of these gas deposits from within, in some sense similar to what happened to Venus and of course what's happening on Earth. And since here we can kind of tell that this is a sustainable mechanism that possibly existed for billions of years, in some sense when it comes to exoplanets and potential discovery of habitable exoplanets, this is definitely a really important discovery. It confirms that atmospheres can actually exist for a very long time, can be created again by various planets depending on the conditions, and most importantly can contain volatiles similar to planet Earth. But obviously, at least for now, that's really all we know. But what's really important is that these techniques are getting better and better, and so it's very likely that in the next year or so, we're finally going to hear about an actual terrestrial planet, possibly in a habitable zone, that also has some kind of a really intriguing atmosphere. And that's because, as this technique shows here, by studying these secondary eclipses, the researchers can definitely figure out 
what these planets are covered with. And so it's only a matter of time before we actually do find a planet possibly containing conditions not so different from some of the terrestrial planets in the solar system. And I guess if we look hard enough, we might even find something similar to planet Earth. Now obviously finding habitable planets and the ones with life on them is still going to be really challenging and will definitely require years of confirmation, but I'm sure in the next year we're going to hear about some other exciting discoveries that will basically blow everyone's minds. And so until then, check out some of the links in the description and some of the videos about previous discoveries. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support the channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.